So we started with Act 1, and Jay and Koniko is back on the beach, honestly. So for the day 2 of their whole, you know, vacation thing. And also, this is the same day that came after, you know, the whole Nyx incident with Shion last episode. So basically, Jay, Koniko, Shion, and Yukari came to the beach before the others and showed up, you know, a bit early. You know, I'm happy for Shion. For the first time, she can smile and live without that weight holding her down and look at her happy as can be with the two damn the two damn lollies together looking mad fine who wouldn't want that anyway koniko just basically is like she can smile because she also have such a capable man my man and so jay's just like hey you don't gotta brag like that but koniko ends up giving this man a kiss on the cheek but i'm not opposed to your affection and so koniko just like when we get back I know exactly what to give you. Jay finna get that good good on his birthday. But when it comes down to it though, someone has to get in the damn way because of course they do. And that's when Miku comes through of all people. And she just like, I'm gonna assume that means some head or a stake in something else. And Miku obviously walked up on him. And so Jay's just like, Miku? And so Kodoko gets hella immediately like aggressive and defensive, just like, what do you want? And so Miku just like, just wanted to check in and see if the cat and fox are gonna devour each other. And some advice. And so Kodoko just like, it'll be the last thing you'll ever see. And so Jay's just like, and what advice exactly you had in mind? And so Miku crouched down and looked around to see if anybody was there and she gets really serious out of nowhere. And so she says, Someone you know around you is going to die. And so Jay just gets immediately serious with her as well. And he's just like, what causes that and who? And so Miku's like, hard to say. I feel dark energy smashing all around, messing with my foresight. So I don't know who or how. All I can say is that you better hold on to everyone you care about close to you. And so Jay just like, well, if someone dares to, then they're going to die. Thanks for the advice, but a warning to you. I know you visited Blue, Aoki, and Symphony. So if you are involved in this, I have no problem of killing or breaking you down. And so Miku just starts getting unserious again. And she's like, aww, you suspect me too? You're no fun. And so she basically whips out them big old demon tits, because why not? And when it comes down to it, she's like, I'll smoosh my titties in your face if it makes you trust me. And so Jay's just like, and eh, just like that, my threat went out the window. And so, <laughs> and so Koniko just smacked them on the head. Just be like, boy, if you don't stop being horny for like five seconds after, did you not hear what she said? Be serious. And so Jay's just like, ah! I'll just lighten in the mood. And so Miku just started laughing and she's just like, well, even if you don't believe me, take heed, kid. I know you'll let past this. Well, later. And so Miku just walks off and Jay was just thinking about Miku's body because he just, he, he's just a horny boy. And when it comes down to it, Koniko just like, you are needlessly childish sometimes. You know that? And so Jay just like, yeah, I know. But I'll also see that ass that Miku got too. <laughs> Man can't get, man can't put it down for 10 seconds. Anyway, so basically Miku went off into the shaded area of where the beach is and essentially she ends up waiting for someone. And so Miku just like, the job is done master. I'm surprised you wanted him to be alert Miss Fu Lee. And so Fu Lee finally making her damn debut. She is she just like, People who are desperate to protect and look over everything often miss something vital. Him being on alert is exactly what we want. And firstly speaking, I want only the best. Anything less isn't worth shit. And so Miku just like, a challenge? I can relate to that. So, what's the next plan of attack? You're done. And so Miku was shocked when she heard that. And she started freaking the hell out. She's just like, well, what do you mean I'm done? I could still give you insight. We worked together for so long. You can't just do that. And so Fu just like, and you've done wonders, but you aren't needed anymore. The insight was valuable, but no longer will we be handed answers. That's no way to live, yes. And so she continues on. She's just like, and you and Ajimu have made us proud. So I think a break is in order, Miku. From this day on, you serve that boy as a amnesiacally broken slave that only adheres to him. Go 
and live your life. And so in that instant, and basically she just had a mind break episode. So she just drooling at the mouth. She can't say anything. All she feel is just horny energy for Jay. And that's essentially it. And while she feeling all that, Fu ended up just dipping the hell off. So that's not good. And all Mika could do is just stand around, not be able to think of anything, or barely able to walk, really. And all she was thinking is Jay mumbling his name over and over again before walking off the beach. So yeah, Miku's kind of done. She, she's kind of, she kind of done, unfortunately. But obviously, Jay doesn't necessarily know anything about this. So the beach day of the part. So the second day of the beach stuff kind of happens. You know, you had, you know, Farina kind of coming through, lifting up her legs and, you know, Jay getting a good ass peek at what Farina got downstairs because absolutely, yes, Toko is basically running away from Tanya because Tanya wants Toko to get in effing shape because she's fat in the right areas. And then also you had Kaede and Shiaki, you know, hanging out a little bit. Shiaki kind of showing that ass off because why not? And Illumine and Mona, who we haven't seen in a long ass time, is just chilling as well, just walking across the whole beach area near the damn waves, honestly. So everybody's having a good ass time. It's a fun time. So the day is practically almost over and the sun was setting. So Jay and Saki just sat kind of together and started to really think about what Miku said. And it's actually starting to really mess with Jay's head a little bit after everything kind of died down. So Saki's just like, I see. Do you think she was telling the truth? And so Jay's just like, I think so. Miku's not smiling is definitely something I've only seen when she's serious. And so Saki's just like, so she's serious that someone could die then. <sighs> no matter what world I go to, this one or the other, death seems to follow close by. And so Jay just like, why? Why does someone have to die? That's not what this place was for. And so Saki just keep it quiet. And Jay just kind of continue on. He just like, I just wanted a place to feel happy and safe. And so much of that went wrong. I never tried to think about Kaede's death at that time or even Ajimu's because I don't know if I can move forward if I did. I wanted to forget. And now death is waiting on me again. I don't want the people I care about to die. I don't even know... Who would it even be? Konako? Blue? Shion? You? The thought of losing any of you would tear me apart. And so he starts basically crying over it. And Saki moves a little closer trying to comfort him. And so basically Saki's just like, Listen to me. I feel the same way as you do. In fact, I've seen and even faced death myself. So I understand. If I lost you, I... I don't think I could even fight anymore. But nothing is ever set in stone. You need to be confident in your power to protect the ones you love. You know, when you made me, you gave me friends and a hero to remind me that I wasn't alone in all the fighting and death around me. In fact, the power of fire you gave me, she still is in me, helping me. I'm just trying to say you don't have to accept her prediction. You defy fate by being here, even to go as far as to bring us all to life when in the world you came from said it was impossible. So what if Miku said someone could die? She may predict that, but it's still a prediction. Don't get discouraged so easily. And if you can't help but to be down or can't fight, we are all here to help you. But we can only help if we all believe we can do it together despite the odds. If we do that, then no one has to die. We'll make her wrong. And if anyone dares try, try to kill us, they'll be fearing for their own lives once they see who they're up against. And if someone does die, we'll help pick each other up and push through. I swear to you, we won't fall so easily. Not Konako, me, you, or anyone else. So basically, Jay just kind of wiped his tears away from him. And he's just like, yeah, I, I got it. Thank you, Saki. And so Saki's just like, yeah, just stay strong and we'll be okay. And so Stephanie just behind him just listens in on the conversation. She's just like, am I disturbing you two? And so Jay just gets up like, nah, it's cool. What's up? 
So Symphony just like, I was just gonna tell you Kanako needed to talk to you at the hotel. And so Jay's like, oh. Alright then. I'll go to her now. So I'll catch y'all two later. And so Jay basically just leaves off and Saki's like, later? Now then, I know you didn't come over here just for that. So what is it? And so Symphony just gets happy. She's just like, you know me so well. It's about the plan for our last vacation day. And I figured out exactly what I want to do with everyone. And so Saki's just like, no, that is something super dirty, isn't it? And so basically they talk about the plan and time kind of goes on again. And Jay heads back to the hotel room where Konako's waiting. So he heads back and he sees Konako and is very sexy, very fine, very beautiful. Chinese dress and even her hair is all Chinese like with chopsticks in them because that's the most Asian thing you can do So anyway, Konako just like I was wondering how long it would take you to come home And so Jay was basically stunned at her looks and Konako just like got nothing to say to your kitten And Jay's just like Konako you look beautiful And so she jumps down from where she was standing. She's just like it's not every day. I look like this Rias helped me with the colors and Kuroka helped with the design overall. She said, if that dress doesn't appeal to that boy, then you married a man with no taste. And so Jay's just like, well, they're definitely, we're on to something, clearly. And so, and so Jay's just like, those chopsticks in your hair, the dress itself, and your bust. You've gotten bigger than usual, haven't you? And so Konako just started getting embarrassed about it. She's like, oh, so you did notice that. And Jay just like, but why dress up like this? And so Konako just like, I'm dressed up like this because I want to go out on a date in the city. You're always surrounded by so many girls. So isn't it about time you give your first wife the time of day? Especially with how you've been closing up to Saki today. And so Jay just like, that was for a different reason. And Konako just like, meaning? And Jay's just like, the whole death thing, Miku said. And so Konako's just like, Jay. And she ran holding his arm. And basically she was like, that's one of the reasons why I want to do this. Stressing out about this is only going to make things worse. Then you won't be able to protect anyone. And Jay's just like, Konako. And so she continues on and she's just like, I told everyone and you before that it's okay to rely on me on all of us. The truth is, I miss those days when we first met, where there was no one in this world besides us two. No despair, summons, or dreams. And Jay was a bit taken aback by her words, and so she was like, I just wanted to recreate what we had all that time ago. So please, even if it's for one night out of millions, I want to go out with you. And Jay just started head patting her, he's just like, I appreciate how much you care about me, and I miss those days too. So how can I say no to you, the girl I wanted the most? So basically, Jay changed his attire and got ready to go on a night out of town with Konako, and he thanked her, putting her heart at ease, and they basically just had a good ass time that night. Walked around and, you know, was at the damn park just, you know, taking a nice stroll, looking at the city lights. Went to the casino, where, you know, it's not really a true casino because in that world, money don't really exist, so they use like a gaming arcade casino to fake like money as a thing and win prizes like a damn arcade. Again, no money is there and so jay just come on and so jay just basically pulling off his best chris sucker impression for rush hour 2 just being like this table's hot i want some of this money get me in this game come on and hell they even go as far as to go have karaoke now i don't know about you but if i'm being honest with you in this scene right here they're singing color the night from persona 3 reload But it's not all good and fun things because we go back to the school, uh, the main headquarters of the safe haven, and we see Kiyoshi walking out of the nurse's office, and she's healing very fast, but not completely back to 100%. 
And so she's breathing really hard, trying to move around, pushing herself way too hard than she should. And she tell you ends up meeting her again. Oh shit. And so she looks at her, she's just like, looks like you're healing fast. I hate you. The fact that you're still breathing right now makes me sick. And so Kiyoshi just doesn't say anything. And so she tell you just like, you never understood what the Guardians truly meant. You always hated what we were. You put your own selfish desire on display over what you were born to do. So was it worth it? Giving someone else the job of destroying Sphere while you live comfortably? And so Kiyoshi was just like, If you're going to kill me, then shut up and do it. I'm not wasting my breath on someone who can never understand me. And so she told you got pissed at that statement and growled and dashed at her blade in hand was about to end her life. But before she did, she ends up stopping an inch away with the blade at her eye, about to basically take it out, but she doesn't do it. And so she told you just like, if it wasn't for that boy, I would cut out your eyes without thinking. It's what you deserve. And so Sage come out of nowhere, she's just like, I would advise you to not do that. Put your blade away, or must I inform my master that you couldn't keep your hands to yourself? And so she basically puts the sword away and starts to leave. And so she tells you just like, watch your back, Kaiho. And so she, before she leaves, she ends up trying to threaten Sage when it comes down to it. And she's just like, don't you ever tell me what to do. And Sage just like, I do not fear you. You should fear my master. And so Shitelia walks off and Kiyoshi watched her, knowing this won't be the last time this will happen. And also, can we give Sage some props for being a badass girl, saying that, you know, fear your own master? Which is, Sage, I'm gonna pump you full of nut. Anyway, point is, we get back to Jay and Koniko having that date night. And so essentially, they just chilling at the park one more time and just having a nice, you know, time sitting together in each other's company. So basically, Jay starts out and he's just like, ah, It's nice to hang out with you like this, Koniko. I never thought we would do karaoke together, so I'm glad for this. And Koniko was happy to hear him say that, but couldn't help but to think about the current situation herself. And so Koniko just like, If only we had this all the time. I've been thinking lately about how it used to be the two of us. I really miss those days where there was only a few people here, but I had you all the time. I know I've been through this before, but I just, I wish for that time again. And so Jay just kind of went silent, and so did Koniko. And so Jay basically says this, and he's just like, If I called off the marriage of the other girls, would that make you happy? And so Koniko was shocked by that, and she was like, What? Why would you say that? And so Jay just like, I just wanted to do what was best for you if I can. And so Koniko just like, I didn't think you would say that. I... I don't want you to do that. I know you do your best to give your time to everyone. I also know that you want to be there for everyone. I don't know. I just want to be with you more. And I just want you to keep me in your heart. And so Jay just basically stood up and he's just like, well... <sighs> Rias a while ago said that too. That I can't be there for her along with everybody else. In the end, I'm just one guy with hundreds of women. Maybe thousands that want me around. To be honest, I'm not sure if there is a way. And so Kondoko just like, and every single one, at some point, needed or needs you <sighs> I know you won't turn your back on anyone if you can't help it I'm just scared that with all that's going on I just don't want to lose you to despair or have someone capture your heart and so Jay just like Kaneko listen to me and he kneels to her he just like you will never be away in my heart Despair in all the highest beings in this world will never tear me apart from you. In all of the women I met, you are the top choice and my top priority. So don't ever think I will forget about you. 
I love and married you first for a reason. The promise we made together after our first time to stay with each other. I never forgot about that. I may be limited with who I can be around, but I will always come home to you. And so Kaneko just started crying while saying his name. And so Jay just like, why are you crying? And so he holds her hand. He's just like, we have all night tonight. Just the two of us. So how about we go home? And I'll show you just how irreplaceable you are to me. And so Jay took her by the hand and they started to go home and having a nice passionate night together. Getting again that good good that was so basically promised by Koniko earlier in the episode. So yeah, that's basically how that went. But we're not done here. But so we go to the last act of the story. And we end up seeing Shizuka, you know, Blue's mama. And when it comes down to it, she basically just thinking in her hotel room about her daughter and how could she have basically turn into a rebellious person because of everything that she's been through and she doesn't know that full story so she's just thinking that this is all weird this is all messed up it's not necessarily what she wanted her daughter to really be and that's when a new voice come through and started talking to her in that room as she contemplated all this stuff <laughs> and she says children are quite the unknown and so Shizuka stood up and turned around and see this person here. And she's like, how did you come in my room? Who are you? And so we finally get the reveal of Shu Hao. And so she says, your monitor behind me and I am Shu Hao. Not that names are necessary. And so Shizuka was like, what do you want? Are you that despair thing that people keep mentioning? And so Shu Hao just basically like, yes. My associates and I come from that. However, I would like to pose a solution to your daughter problem. And so Shizuka like, you aren't going to hurt my daughter, are you? And so Shu just like, no, I have no interest in her. Kill him. And your daughter will have no one but to you to cling to. All we need you to do is spy on him and give us the intel. That's all. I've seen how you looked at Jay, and you want him to stop ruining your daughter. He is indeed an eyesore, and you and your daughter will be safer when he dies. And so Shizuka contemplates this, and she ends up agreeing to this, and she's just like, I'll do it. Do not harm my daughter, and we have a deal. I even heard that he touched her in ways... <sighs> I would hurt him myself if I could. And so Shu is just like, then we have an agreement. For your first task, I want you to see to his security detail of this world. I believe she secures and controls most, if not all, the tech in this world. And so Shizuka is just like, and who would that be? And Shu basically grew a devious ass smile. And so she's like, Sage, I want to peel her brain back and see what makes her tick. She can also summon people to this world along with the essence, and I must have that power. I wonder how he will look once I reboot her to my liking. And that right there is the end of the story. So we got some devious ass m things in play and in motion right now. We got Miku out here saying that someone could die. We got Jay basically kind of, you know, questioning how that would happen or if it would happen and all that sort of stuff. Along with trying to console Konako and even himself in a way. Then we also get Miku, the very same bitch, end up getting her mind wiped by Fu. And now we have Shu Hao basically manipulating the shit out of Shizuka just so she can get to Sage for some reason. It's not looking good. Things are in motion. Things are in place, sir. And it's not necessarily the best of times right now. So when it comes down to it, it's like, damn, so who leaves on the move? And Shu Hao is also on the move as well. And if you've seen where I have introduced these characters, there's Boyoko that's out there somewhere. What she's doing? Who really knows? But we'll have to see in the future episodes. So while this episode was a bit of a setup episode, and you could say it's a slight bit slower, still things was revealed. And at the end of it, and at really at the end of you know this whole episode, really. This is just leading me to know how to set up the next couple of parts because I already have an idea of what Fuli is going to do as well as a new character that would jump in at some point in time 
to you know see what's going on in this whole situation good or bad and when it comes down to it though you know there's a lot of things i got planned honestly in fact i was actually thinking about you know maybe we could do something with lamine and her genshin friends but shh we have to see how that goes but anyway hopefully you did enjoy this episode if you did be sure to like share subscribe hit the bell notification on your way out also follow me on the socials and you like to donate to the channel ko and cash app is available as well and until then it's boy jay signing off have a blessed day